cleared everything out of the van I had in there, except for just a couple power cords and a bungee cord. And I'm gonna be going over to my buddy's, see where he wants to take it. I'm gonna have him help me out with uh, putting in the bed frame. Oh, the day I break these chains, I'm bound for the life of the simple things. I got a few things to show you guys today. So I got a new package here. This is supposed to be, it should be anyways, a Wi-Fi enabled endoscope. So I had been looking at some pretty darn expensive options for it. So an endoscope with an LCD screen and everything is you can see right here. I'll show you the one I was thinking about. Very expensive, like 300 bucks. I'm thinking when I got emailed about this endoscope, I was like, oh man, what if that would be almost as good? What if I could connect Wi-Fi to the laptop and it's an even bigger screen so you can see even more? Or I can use this phone mount here, have my phone mounted right there in front of it if I'm working on a countertop or something. I'm pretty excited to see how this works. If it works like some of the claims, it could turn into a business opportunity. What do we have in here? Just some packaging. Here's the box. Push that out of the way. So we have the Wi-Fi Endoscope HD 1200p here. Let's pop her open and see what she's all about. And we have what looks like probably the camera in this little plastic guy here. I think that's what that is. Well, that's what we got in there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it back and see what else is in the box here before we do go ahead and do anything with it. Okay, so this is like a power component, input, input to camera, input to DC, five, five volts. So it's probably going to be running off the phone directly, but we'll find out. Just packing material. And then here we are. That's a decent length. Oh, no, this is the camera. See there, that's the camera, that's the length of cord. Have to see what kind of length it is when I do the review for you. This guy I'm sure is supposed to connect into the phone, but that's in there. And then we have a little, the little directions here, the little user manual. So, that's it for the camera here unboxing and i'm gonna go and read up on the directions this time because this seems a little bit more complicated than most a lot of different things that they're suggesting you can do with it just to let you all know this product here we are going to be having a giveaway after I do the review. And so in the review is where I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys how to enter for the giveaway. I was talking about doing an entire bed frame out of aluminum. I didn't end up going that route here as you can see. And there's a lot of reasons. It was just extremely expensive and uh, I didn't know that I would save as much weight as I was hoping. So what I did is I used this E-Track. So there's two stretches 
of e-track here if we go down here you can see the other one here uh and e-track is actually used in trailers to tie things down and everything uh it's extremely strong it's rated for like 4,000 pounds it's pretty light and what i did is i went ahead and i bolted it in one spot here against the uh, frame rail back there because none of these frame rails lined up when i first looked at them i thought these beams here when i first looked at them kind of had like a level to them well they didn't at all uh they were different spacings all the way around which was going to make it a nightmare so i went ahead and had these uh some scrap angle iron welded onto the e track here as you can see and then supported the e-track again along the wheel wells right on it which was like the perfect height as well and that there is extremely stable if you look i can jerk this all around and nothing moves and then it made it really easy to then do the two by fours which keep that e-track from flexing on me uh, these these two by fours in here it's just basically three two by fours one sheet of plywood two pieces of the uh e-track and some angle iron it's set up for for a rv full mattress so it's a little smaller than a queen but and a little shorter than a normal queen it allows me to sleep lengthways on it giving me some space to be able to do more with my van build. So I got all this space here, not that it's a ton of space, but you know, it's reasonably usable space in here. And then it gives me some space here in the back to kind of like act like I have a garage. And having no real legs underneath here, the way it was done, it's completely floated and there's tons of room for storage. So it's absolutely the best usage of the space that i could come up with and still have the size of bed that i want because i want to be able to have two people in here fairly comfortably and uh, i want to have a lot of room to put stuff so things aren't disorganized what i'm doing with the vapor barrier is it's basically aluminum foil with a fiber in the middle and that fiber gives it strength so it won't tear or rip and it has to be cut with with uh utility scissors and that that there aluminum is 100 percent impervious to you know water vapor or air so we're going to be able to have that space where i put that is going to have just the air that's left underneath there and since i'm doing it right now where it's around 30 percent humidity here in san diego i'm going to be able to have it so that that aluminum foil will keep me from having condensation problems. Now, another huge be benefit of that aluminum foil is aluminum has what's called a really high emissivity. And that's one of the components of helping out with insulation. It blocks infrared ra radiation and infrared radiation can be a source of heat. They use aluminum vapor barriers on steel buildings a lot, like so metal buildings, to prevent that condensation issue. And uh, here we are, we're, you know, a van is pretty much a metal building, right? If you're trying to treat it as a home. All of this stuff that was just kind of in the way and an ugly mess in the van, now kind of sits in here. I haven't used all the space underneath this bed frame at all. Uh, I got a lot of ideas I'm working through, but uh, I figured I'd just leave it kind of rough in the back here for just grab stuff. And uh, I'll probably put like some kind of clothes hanger set up on the back here before I, I move forward and everything uh, to hang like my shirts and my pants that are more dress for the kind of work I've been doing. And I also bought this guy, Winter FM 62 DZ. And that's one of only three different dual zone fridge freezer combos. And there's only two of them that are dedicated dual zone 
where you know you have an absolutely completely different compartment insulated from the other one and this is a significant amount of insulation I'm really interested to see how well this works. There's an angle one that's very similar to this design. I mean, these should close really good. I mean, they're pretty much standard what you'd actually see in a freezer chest, you know, and they seal real tight. Right down here is where you set temperature and everything. And it has two different digital readouts for each space very cool it's a 12 volt fridge so this is true 12 volt so this is a very efficient compressor that's in this and i'm gonna test and let everybody know what kind of power it draws so you can plan solar for it and you can plan how big of a battery setup you'd need to get rocking with it first thing we're going to do though is we're going to go ahead and charge it up on ac and get it up to the temperatures i want so we're just looking at what it's running at and everybody will know the true rating, you know, what this draws, what this draws in 24 hours, cause I'm gonna do that. And uh, I'll even give you a suggestion on what batteries, how many, all of that. And then I'm hoping that I can run into some people and be able to test the other dual zone setups that are out there and really start getting some real numbers on what the real energy draw these things take to operate so you guys can plan out there and not overspend. Wow, the park has really good power today. So I'm going ahead and I'm using this surge protector, not because I'm really that worried. I'm just using this surge protector because I've been doing that with all of my battery testing that I've been doing with the kilowatt. And so I want to keep it all consistent just in case there's some sort of loss that comes because of the surge protector. I just don't really know if there is or not. Okay, plugging her in. So we got her all plugged in now. Clock started at zero, no draw yet. And uh, we have a watt pull now. The fridge compressor just turned on. I can hear it. Really quiet though. I like that, I like that a lot. And on AC, we're only drawing 60 watts. So that's less than 60 watts now that the compressor's kicked on. That's really good if that's off of AC. 7 ohm here. And let's... Oh, that's minus 8. I don't need that cold. Small zone. I'm assuming that's the zone I'll use as the freezer. So I'm going to go to 20. I think that's well into the freezing range. And then I'll set the other one 39. You know, that's good. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. So inside our chests right now, it's 81 degrees inside the fridge. And we're going to see what kind of power it takes it to take those temperatures down to our set temperatures. And then I'll get to testing with 12 volt and all that. So on AC, 120 volt AC, we're pulling less than an amp right now. We'll see what it does on 12 volt later. I just poked in to go ahead and check on this to see where the temp is already. And we're already down to 36 degrees in our freezer and 39 for the fridge. It's already at the temperature it needs to be. And it's only taken 70, kil 70 watts, 0.07 kilowatts at 70 watts. Fridge is already at temperature and it's just working on the freezer now. And it did that in an hour and five minutes. Okay, folks, so we're all the way down to our desired temperatures, both our fridge and our freezer. And that came from a beginning of 81 degrees inside the chest at the very beginning. We did this 
in just under two hours and only on 100 watts. Now, the reason why that's such a cool thing to me, this is a 100 watt solar panel. So this solar panel should get enough wattage, 100 watts every hour in peak sunlight. Now that doesn't always happen. It's not all the time that it's gonna be that. We just brought the temperature way down in that fridge on what that panel at say noon will put out 100 watts and it took us two hours to do this so i'm thinking that this fridge should have not even a little bit of a problem running on a 100 watt panel and still being able to put some power back into your batteries get out there connect with people live your big story and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck peace guys it's been a long day without you my friend and i tell you all about it when i see you again we come a long way from where we began oh i'll tell you all about